Are we ready for some Bears football in jolly old England? Well, that might be what we get on Sunday morning, or maybe not. I don't know. It's going to be weird sitting there at 9.30 a.m. Eastern watching the Bears play, but then I think about it and I say to myself, I can watch, I can record my recap video, and then I can go play 18 holes of golf. That's a hell of a way to spend a Sunday. That's all I'm going to say. So what do we got coming up here? Sunday morning, London, Bears, Jags. You've got the Bears coming off of a dominant 36-10 to win over the Panthers last Sunday. They went up against a crappy team, and they did what good teams should do, right? They beat up on a crappy team. And that's even after the Panthers scored first with a Chuba Hubbard touchdown run. The Bears kicked it into overdrive after that. Caleb Williams with his second game in, his, in five starts in the NFL. He now has two games where he's went over 300 yards past DeAndre Swift. Had his second straight pretty solid performance. The defense certainly did their thing. Now here come the Bears all of a sudden with a rookie starting quarterback sitting at 3-2. and two. And with the schedule and how it's kind of shaking out, they got a chance to make a little bit of hay over the next few games. They took care of step one, which was beating Carolina. Can't look ahead to the bye week. Can't look ahead on the schedule. Got to focus on the Jags here on Sunday. Got to make some hay here because the second half of the season, the schedule for the Bears gets significantly tougher. Um, the offense over the past couple weeks has shown some improvement. They certainly have some work to do overall. They're still 16th in points, right in the middle of the pack in the league, and 26th in total yards, like 29th in rushing yards. They've been a little better on the ground the past couple of games, but still not nearly where this team would want to be. The defense is playing at a pretty good level. They're 5th in total points allowed, 7th in total yards allowed. If there's one place you can get them at least a little bit, and a couple of teams have shown this, they're 18th against the run. That's the one place that you can attack this Bears defense a little bit, which is pretty standard for a cover two defense. Um, the reality is, though, is in a tough NFC North where the Vikings are 5-0, and the Lions are 3-1, and the Packers are 3-2, and the Bears badly need this one. To be able to go into the bye week with a rookie quarterback as their starter at 4-2, and have two weeks to prepare for their next opponent, that's a pretty damn good spot to be in. And if I had told you before the season started that the Bears had the chance and, or could finish 4-2 and two heading into their bye, you probably would have taken that. Most teams would take that start, honestly. Meanwhile, for the Jaguars, last week gave them perhaps a little bit of hope after that 0-4 start. They badly needed to win, and they got it done. They beat the Colts 37-34 in an exciting match with Trevor Lawrence, threw for over 370 yards. Tank Bigsby ran for over 100 yards, including a big touchdown run. Uh, the story for this Jags team is just struggles all abound um, on both sides of the ball in the first five games. And offensively, 21st in points, 15th in total yards. So not terrible, but certainly not the level of performance you would expect for a team that invested a shit ton of money, obviously, in former first overall pick Trevor Lawrence at quarterback. Travis Etienne, Etienne is a former first round pick. They've invested a number of high picks and money and free agency on the offensive side of the ball so for them to be kind of average has to be a disappointment right their defense has been god awful you maybe have one bright spot with trayvon walker already having five sacks in five games so he's really starting to come into his own and showing that he was more than just athletic upside that there was real um, big time potential as an edge rusher when they took him a couple of years ago number one overall but the defense as a whole still really bad right 30th in points allowed, 31st in total yards allowed, butt naked last in the league in passing yards allowed. This is a bad defense. This is a defense you can get after. This is a defense that you can put up points on and you can hit some big plays in the passing game. And when you look at the Jags in this matchup, in a situation where environment where, frankly, the Jags are used to playing, they get usually at least one game in London every year, a loss against the Bears here would really put a fork in them for the season really hard to envision a great path to success for a team starting one and five and in fact you'd be wondering ah, eh, you're one in five heading into the bye week does that mean curtains on the doug peterson experience in jacksonville the current betting odds for this matchup have the bears at one and a half point favorites so slight favorites here which is a little bit of a surprise i know the bears don't play in london nearly as much as 
Jacksonville does, but the Bears have been over there for several days. They're three and two. The Jags are one and four. I'm surprised this wasn't like two and a half or three. The over-under is 44 and a half. In terms of the injury report, Zach Pickens, Terrell Smith still out. Now apparently we can add Jaquan Brisker to the mix. We've also got Tyreek Stevenson is doubtful. So what has been a real strength of this defense the first five games overall, which has been the secondary, is potentially looking at being without two of its key starters as you head into this matchup. And meanwhile, for the Jags, you've still got Tyson Campbell out. You've got four players questionable, including Gabe Davis and Evan Engram. So we'll see whether or not they end up suiting up. The Jaguars certainly could use all of the help that they could get at this point, right? Uh, when you look at this matchup, though, and you say, okay, what are the keys to victory for each team? I'll start off with the Bears, and I think it's throw early and throw often. I know the temptation is going to be there to want to run. You want to balance it out, take some pressure off of Caleb. I get that. However, you also got to play to your matchup. And the matchup here is incredibly favorable. You've got DJ Moore. You've got Roma Dunze. You've got Keenan Allen's back. You've got Cole Komet. You've got Swift out of the backfield in the passing game, or even Roshan Johnson out of the backfield in the passing game. Throw the fucking rock. Throw it early. Throw it often. Attack the middle of the field. Attack downfield. This is why you drafted Caleb Williams number one overall. This is why you put all the weapons around him for matchups like this. You've got to attack the Jags through the air. Their run defense isn't great, but it is certainly better than their secondary, certainly better than their pass defense overall. That's where you've got to attack them. That's where you can exploit them. Offensively, though, as you do that, you got to avoid the turnovers. Right? That's a key you could call out in almost every game, but especially with Caleb as a rookie quarterback. You want to avoid those turnovers because those can be backbreakers in bad spots. You don't want to make it easier for the Jags. They're a 1-4 and four team for a reason right now. Make it as hard on them as you possibly can. And for the Bears' defense, especially with the injuries to Brisker and Stevenson in the secondary, this front four has to get after it. This needs to be a big day for Montez Sweat. Jervon Dexter's gotten off to a solid start this year. He needs to show up and be a presence. They need that front four to take over this game. Meanwhile, for the Jags, run Tank Bigsby. Stop fucking around with Travis Etienne. Run Tank Bigsby. It seems like he brings more to your office. He brings more to your running game. Good things happen when you put the ball in his hands. So put the ball in his hands more. In the passing game, especially because the Bears' defense is vulnerable on the back end with Stevenson out, potentially out and Brisker already confirmed out, take shots downfield. Attack the Bears. They can be had there this week. So you got to do that. And then defensively, you know, similar type of story here. We'll see whether or not Tevin Jenkins plays or not, but Murray was pretty solid inside at guard. Um, Matt Pryor has been about equivalent to Nate Davis, which isn't saying much, but he hasn't been a huge downgrade. Get pressure, though, up the middle. I know you've got Trayvon Walker, you've got Josh Allen, you've got those guys on the edge, but they really need to be able to get some pressure up the middle. Pressure on the edge can also work. Just get pressure on Caleb Williams. I know he's been doing well under pressure against the Blitz, but if you can get home and you can get to him, it can disrupt the timing and rhythm of his game and the Bears' passing attack. So this one will be interesting, right? This is a key game for the Bears in terms of where they're at in their schedule and what winning this one could mean. For the Jags, this is critical. This could potentially be Doug Peterson's coaching for his job, right? This could potentially be lose and your season, for all intents and purposes, is over. That's what it comes down to. So I actually expect that this could be a fun, interesting matchup with some of the injuries on defense. The Bears could be a little more gettable than they usually are. And the Bears have the chance to put up some big numbers here. So I think that over-under is certainly at risk. We're not going to see a bunch of Bears football on Sunday morning. Hip, hip, cheerio. We're going to see that pill in the air a lot. With that said, I'm going to be a homer, and I'm going to pick the Bears 27-24. to 24. Bear down, bitches! Let's go to 4-2 and, and take two weeks off and get ready for the next one. Fuck yeah.